Picture this, it's rush hour in New York, Los Angeles, or even Chicago. Cars are bumper to bumper horns blaring drivers exhausted. Now imagine looking up at the sky and seeing a small electric aircraft quietly lifting off, gliding above the gridlock and landing in just a few minutes. Science fiction, not anymore. Because while the world's biggest economies are still stuck in traffic, one small African nation has just leapfrogged straight into the future. That nation is Rwanda. And in Kigali, before a stunned audience at the Aviation Africa 2025 Summit History was written, a self-flying electric taxi, no pilot, no fuel, no noise, took to the skies. This wasn't just a demonstration of technology. It was a statement Rwanda is no longer waiting for the future to arrive. Rwanda is building it right now. But here's the question that should make us all pause. Why Rwanda? Why not New York, Tokyo, or Dubai? Why did this small country, once marked by tragedy, become the stage for Africa's and the world's first public test of a flying taxi? The answer will not only surprise you, it may just change how you think about the next decade of transportation technology and even leadership. So buckle up, open your mind, and let's take off on this journey together. By the end, you'll see why Rwanda may soon be called the Silicon Valley of Aviation in Africa, and why the rest of the world, including the United States, should be paying very close attention. If you believe Africa's story deserves to be told honestly, subscribe now. And tell me in the comments, would you trust a pilotless flying taxi with your life? On a bright morning in Kigali, Rwanda, the stage was set for something the world had never witnessed on African soil. The Aviation Africa 2025 Summit had already drawn experts, journalists, and curious onlookers from across the continent. But as the crowd gathered at the launch site, few realized they were about to see history take flight. Then, with a low electronic hum instead of the thunderous roar of engines, the Ehang a 21 s lifted smoothly into the sky. It was small, sleek, futuristic, yet completely real. For the first time in Africa, a self-flying electric taxi carried passengers above the streets of Kigali. There was no pilot at the controls, no fuel tanks to worry about just a fully autonomous aircraft relying on its advanced systems to navigate, fly, and land safely. The specs alone seemed unbelievable. 16 rotors arranged in a coaxial double design, a capacity for two passengers, a cruising speed of 130 kilometers per hour, a range of 35 kilometers on a single charge more than enough to transform an hour-long commute through clogged city streets into a five-minute glide above the chaos. Imagine leaving downtown Kigali and reaching the international airport in the time it takes to brew a cup of coffee. But what truly stunned the audience wasn't just speed or convenience, it was safety. The A2 Anxian Sian S operates with something called distributed electric propulsion, meaning each of its 16 motors works independently. If one fails, 15 others keep you aloft. If half fail, you still land safely. Add to that triple redundancy flight control systems, automatic emergency landing features, and real-time monitoring, and you begin to see why some engineers argue this machine may be safer than many commercial airplanes. The economic implications are equally staggering. A helicopter ride in most major cities costs anywhere from $200 to $500 per trip, putting it far beyond the reach of ordinary people. But electric flying taxis like Rwanda's demonstration could one day cost as little as $20 to $50 per flight. For the price of a dinner, you could fly across an entire city in minutes, bypassing the endless traffic jams that cost African economies billions every year. And here's another shocker, the price tag of the aircraft itself. While a conventional helicopter can cost between $1.5 million and $15 million, the A260S sells for just $410,000. That's still expensive today, but when you compare it to traditional aviation costs and factor in that it requires no fuel, no pilot and minimal maintenance. It starts to look less like a luxury toy and more like the beginning of a revolution. Charging is also remarkably efficient. Within just one hour, the aircraft is ready to fly again, powered by advanced solid-state batteries, boasting one of the highest energy densities in the world. Twelve independent battery packs mean that even if several fail, the aircraft still operates safely. Rwanda didn't just test a futuristic idea, they tested a working system engineered for reliability. For the people standing in Kigali that day, it wasn't just about a shiny new machine. It was about a shift in imagination. 
Just 30 years ago, Rwanda was a nation scarred by tragedy. Today, it was showing the world that Africa could lead, not follow, when it comes to cutting-edge technology. The demonstration sent a clear message, Rwanda is not waiting for permission from New York, Tokyo, or Berlin. Rwanda is claiming its place at the forefront of the 21st century aviation revolution. The cheers that followed as the aircraft touched down weren't just for the engineers and officials present. They were for a continent that has long been underestimated. Rwanda's flying taxi wasn't just a flight, it was a declaration. A new chapter in African innovation had begun, and the skies of Kigali were its opening page. As the flying taxi hovered over Kigali, a deeper question echoed through the crowd and across international headlines. Why Rwanda? Why did this small, landlocked country better known for its painful history than for cutting-edge innovation beat out giants like the United States, Germany, or Japan? The answer lies in Rwanda's relentless pursuit of progress. While wealthy nations argued in endless committees about regulations, Rwanda was quietly building a system that encouraged innovation without sacrificing safety. Their philosophy was simple. The future belongs not to those who wait, but to those who act. To understand this leap, we need to rewind to 2016. That was the year Rwanda stunned the medical world by introducing drone delivery for blood and vaccines. While Amazon in America was still promising package deliveries someday, Rwanda was already flying critical medical supplies to remote villages. The results were extraordinary. In less than a decade, over 70,000 units of blood products were dispatched by drone to more than 20 hospitals across the country. In emergencies where road travel would have taken four dangerous hours through the mountains, drones arrived in just 15 minutes. The numbers are staggering. Before drone delivery, up to 40% of temperature-sensitive blood products in Rwanda expired due to poor roads and unreliable refrigeration. After drones, wastage dropped dramatically, and with it lives were saved every single day. For ordinary citizens, this wasn't just about convenience. It was the difference between life and death. This track record matters. Because when Rwanda unveiled the Ehang A2C16S to the world, the public wasn't terrified. They had already grown accustomed to seeing pilotless aircraft buzzing above their villages saving lives. Trust was already built. What looked radical to Americans and Europeans seemed almost natural to Rwandans. And so the flying taxi demonstration became more than a technical milestone. It was the climax of a decade-long strategy. Rwanda didn't wake up one morning and decide to test futuristic vehicles. They had been laying the foundation piece by piece, year after year, building regulations that moved faster than bureaucracy, training local technicians, pilots, and engineers, forging partnerships with global leaders like China's Ehang, while ensuring knowledge transfer and local capacity building. The world took notice. Headlines described Rwanda as Africa's Silicon Valley of aviation. Aviation experts praised the country for turning its difficult geography mountains, limited paved roads into a driver of innovation instead of a barrier. What seemed impossible became inevitable. But perhaps the most striking reaction came from the global powers. In the United States, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, often takes years to approve even small-scale drone operations. In Europe, endless safety reviews can stall progress for decades. Yet Rwanda, a country with a fraction of the resources, managed to approve and execute a flying taxi demonstration in record time without a single compromise on safety. This disparity sparked uncomfortable questions. How could a nation once considered developing outperform the world's richest economies in implementing futuristic aviation? Were wealth and size really advantages, or were they chains of complacency? For Africa, the symbolism was powerful. Citizens across the continent saw Rwanda's flight as proof that they too could leapfrog old systems and claim a place in the future. For international observers, it was a wake-up call. The world order of technology leadership is shifting, and Africa is no longer content to sit in the back seat. The scene in Kigali was more than a spectacle. It was a declaration that Africa's moment had arrived. Rwanda, the country no one expected, had climbed to the front of the line, and as the flying taxi touched down, applause broke out not just for Rwanda, but for the idea that small nations with vision and courage can set the pace for the rest of the world. When the Ehang A2186S lifted into the skies of Kigali, it wasn't just a display of technology, it was a glimpse of how everyday life in Rwanda and across Africa could be transformed. 
For ordinary citizens, the promise is immediate and tangible. Medical emergencies in remote villages no longer need to mean hours on dangerous winding roads. With air taxis and drones, life-saving supplies can reach hospitals in minutes. Imagine a mother in labor or a child with malaria in rural Rwanda cases where every second matters. What once required desperate prayers for an ambulance could soon be resolved by a quick flight over the hills. For many Rwandans, this isn't about luxury transport. It's about survival. The economic ripple effects are just as significant. Traffic congestion costs African economies billions of dollars in lost productivity each year. In Kigali, a trip from downtown to the airport can take 45 minutes by car, but just five minutes by flying taxi. If scaled, this could radically reshape urban mobility, reduce pollution from idling vehicles, and free up countless hours for workers and families. Ordinary people could live farther from crowded city centers without fear of long commutes easing the housing crisis in growing cities. But the consequences extend far beyond transport. Politically, Rwanda has just rebranded itself. For decades, the global image of Rwanda was tied to the genocide of 1994. Now, with every successful drone delivery and every futuristic flight, Rwanda tells a different story, one of resilience, innovation, and bold leadership. This is soft power in its purest form. Rwanda has turned technology into a diplomatic asset, positioning itself as a country others must now study respect and even emulate. The symbolism resonates deeply. A nation once written off as broken is now writing the rules for the future. The political class in Rwanda understands this perfectly. President Paul Kagame's government has used aviation innovation not just to serve its people, but also to prove a point that small African states can define their own path outside the shadow of Western powers. In a world where the U.S. and Europe often dominate technological narratives, Rwanda has inserted itself at the center of one of the most futuristic industries of all. Of course, challenges remain. Battery limitations, weather risks, and infrastructure costs will slow expansion. Public trust, though stronger in Rwanda than elsewhere, will still need careful nurturing. Yet politically, even the act of beginning has placed Rwanda ahead of the pack. By moving first, Kigali has gained leverage. Investors, engineers, and policymakers now see Rwanda as the natural hub for testing and scaling aviation innovation in Africa. The civil impact is equally powerful on a cultural level. Rwanda's youth, the generation born after the genocide, are growing up in a country where drones and air taxis are not science fiction, but everyday reality. That builds confidence, ambition, and a sense that Africa's problems can be solved not by waiting for the West, but by inventing solutions at home. In short, the flight of a single autonomous taxi wasn't just about Kigali's skyline. It was about rewriting Rwanda's national identity. A people once defined by tragedy now see themselves as pioneers of the future. And a government once underestimated has seized a new political identity, not as a follower, but as a leader turning technology into sovereignty. When Rwanda's flying taxi rose above Kigali, the ripple was felt far beyond Africa's borders. In Washington, in Brussels, in Tokyo, and in Beijing, policymakers and industry leaders took note. The symbolism was impossible to ignore. A small African nation had just showcased a technology that even the world's biggest economies were still struggling to bring to the public stage. For the United States, the moment was sobering. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, has spent years entangled in regulatory debates, dragging its feet on approving even modest drone operations. American tech giants like Amazon, Google, and Uber have all pitched visions of autonomous aerial transport, yet none have delivered a public flight on the scale Rwanda just achieved. The world's richest nation was forced to watch as Kigali, with far fewer resources, stole the spotlight. Two older Americans who grew up with the U.S. as the undisputed leader of aviation from the Wright brothers to Apollo, the shift is unsettling. How did America go from conquering the moon to being outpaced in the skies by a small African country? Europe faces a similar dilemma. Safety-first cultures and bureaucratic caution mean new technologies can languish in committee rooms for decades. Germany, home to some of the world's best engineers, has yet to put a passenger carrying autonomous taxi in public flight. Meanwhile, Rwanda, once written off as developing, is flying past. The message is clear vision and execution now matter more than wealth and legacy. China, on the other hand, has reason to celebrate. The Ehain A2199S is a product of Chinese engineering, and Rwanda's partnership represents more than a sale. It is a strategic foothold. 
technology transfer local training and joint ventures position China not just as a supplier, but as a collaborator in Africa's aviation future. For Beijing, this is proof that its model of rapid experimentation and global partnerships works and that Africa is a willing stage for its technological diplomacy. The global aviation industry also took notice. Experts now talk about Rwanda as a potential testing hub for advanced air mobility across Africa. Investors are watching closely calculating the economic opportunities of a continent that may leapfrog traditional infrastructure just as it did with mobile phones. If Africa has only 3% of the world's paved roads, but 17% of its population, then airborne transport isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. For the wider world, the Kigali demonstration is more than a novelty. It's a warning shot. If Western nations continue to delay, they risk ceding leadership in emerging industries, not just to China, but to the very nations they once considered followers. Rwanda has shown that being small is no barrier when there is clarity of vision and courage to act. In that sense, the flight over Kigali was not just about Africa, it was about the changing balance of global power. The 21st century may not belong to the countries with the deepest pockets, but to those willing to take the boldest risks. And on that day in 2025, Rwanda proved it was ready to lead. What happened in Kigali was more than a flight, it was a warning. The future does not wait. It rewards those bold enough to seize it and punishes those who hesitate. While America debates and Europe regulates, Rwanda has acted. And that single act may have just shifted how the world imagines transportation sovereignty and even leadership. But here is the deeper truth. This isn't only about Rwanda. It's about Africa as a whole. A continent long dismissed as lagging behind is now showing the world a different path, one where nations skip over outdated systems and build the future directly. Just as mobile phones allowed Africa to leapfrog landlines, flying taxis could help Africa bypass the decades and trillions required to pave roads and build railways. The implications are staggering. A continent of 1.4 billion people could suddenly be more connected than ever before not by following Europe or the US, but by carving its own trail. And yet the path is not without danger. New technology brings challenges, questions of safety, trust, cost, and equity. Will flying taxis truly become part of public transport, or will they remain a symbol for the elite? Will Africa control this technology or simply host it while others profit? These questions matter not just for Rwanda, but for every nation that dares to innovate. For viewers in America, the lesson is both humbling and urgent. If Rwanda can rewrite its future through vision and action, what excuse does the United States have for falling behind? For those following Africa's rise, the message is equally clear. Countries like Rwanda and Burkina Faso, under leaders such as President Ibrahim Traore, are proving that courage and clarity matter more than size or wealth. The question is no longer whether Africa can lead it, is whether the world is ready to accept that leadership. So let me ask you, would you step into a pilotless flying taxi tomorrow? Do you believe Africa's bold experiments in aviation and sovereignty are a model for the future or a risk the world is not yet ready to take? And more importantly, do you think leaders like Ibrahim Traore in Burkina Faso will push their nations into similar leaps, challenging the old order in ways we've never seen before? Please share this video if you feel you are among the first to witness Africa's new chapter. And subscribe if you believe, as I do, that the truth is always more important than the headlines.